Hello, hello, and welcome to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today on the channel, um, this video, we are going to take a look into the Word of God and what the Heavenly Father is saying regarding His Word and the fact that He tells us that my Word will not return void. Okay, God's Word is very much bond. He means what He says. And everything that he says and everything that he has prophesied it will come to pass we're seeing some of it come to pass we can even see just in reading from the Old Testament to the New Testament how the Old Testament spoke of Christ Jesus coming and then in the New Testament Christ Jesus is here okay and he's giving uh, healing and deliverance and self talking of salvation for the kingdom and instructing us in the new pathway that God has created for us through him so we can even see that as we take a look just from going from the Old Testament and going into the New Testament so and then also when we take a look at his word he's given us instructions on everything everything about this journey it's just a matter of really sitting down and just giving God's word time you know, and just putting your mind into wanting to, you know, hear what thus says the Lord. Because he is telling us everything. He is giving us all instructions on every single thing in the earth. It's, it's right in the word of God, okay? And uh, the holy word book that I'm led to to actually go into this uh, revelation regarding my word will not return void. It's coming to us from Isaiah chapter 55. And it's Isaiah chapter 55, starting with verse 6, where the Lord says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Okay, let him forsake his unrighteous thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon him. Now, you know, what this verse is saying right here, he says, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts, his way of thinking. Because prior to coming into the knowledge of God and coming into the knowledge of our, the fact that he's our creator and the fact that he has sent Christ Jesus to the earth for salvation and the reason for sending him into the earth for salvation. Because a lot of times we hear about salvation before we hear about the fact that God is our creator. So then a lot of people get misunderstood with the fact, you know, and don't really want to receive the, uh, Jesus Christ as being their Savior because they don't really and have not the knowledge of God being their creator or have not accepted God as their creator, okay? So then that makes them, uh, unfortunately, out of faith with God, okay, which is not where anyone, he wants any of us to be. In that position, he wants us all to know about him. He wants us all, every human being, walking the face of the earth. He wants them all to have knowledge of the kingdom of God and then to have knowledge of the Savior that was sent in order to bring peace between man and God, okay? Because of the sin and transgressions that was committed in the earth against God, there was a separation. And so, um, in uniting back with Christ and accepting Christ, but nevertheless, some people, you know, we don't even get to have that particular knowledge in order to, or I say some people have been given that knowledge in order to be able to receive God as their creator or to know of it, or of the truth of that's what is going on, okay, and the need for salvation in the earth. So we begin with uh, going back to our verses in 55 Isaiah and he goes on to say that, uh, verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon him. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are are higher than your thoughts okay for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not there but waters the earth 
and makes it bring forth bud and it get, may give seed that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I have sent it out okay so he tells us that whenever he speaks whatever he says whatever word comes out of his mouth it is going to accomplish that which is said it is sent out to accomplish and God's word was sent to the earth for people okay for mankind for us to read for us to understand and have knowledge of who our Creator is okay and how he established the earth, the heavens and the earth, how he created people. That is all provided to us in the word of God. Okay. And then, uh, let's see, another scripture I've led to is going to be coming from the book of Matthew in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 24. So Matthew chapter 24 and... Uh, verse 35 okay verse 35 tells us that heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away so we see these things are going to not no more exist but God's word will still even be in existence even then because even as we are saints today in the earth we are writing the holy word scriptures too with our own sanctification and the fact that God has created and allowed us to be a part of the kingdom, okay? So we are written in the new book. We're written in the book. We're written in the book of life, okay? That book that God created in order for those in whom he has placed life into, in order for that life to exist. So, you know, we're all writing, written in those pages of life, in the book that God is writing regarding the book of life. Which would, of course, be also in reference to his word, because it's his word. It is his mouth that is speaking, his presence that is coming forth in the earth, okay? Now, another scripture I'm led to is Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and then if we start at verse 9... Jesus Christ began to teach the disciples how to pray. And what he says, what he begins is, it says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now you see, at the beginning of the prayer, the petition, Jesus Christ says for us to pray, Thy will be done on earth. Thy will. Now God's will is His word. God's will is His plan. God's will is His purpose. God's will is everything that He has, His intentions of His heart. For all of that, that is the prayer that we've been told that we are to pray unto the Heavenly Father. Okay? For His words and everything for Him to be exalted for his establishment to be to occur in the earth okay okay and then another scripture i'm led over into is jose the book of jose and i'm led over to chapter four into that book and that's jose chapter four and then uh let me see here Chapter 4 in the book of Jose. Okay, chapter 4 in the book of Jose. And then uh, going into verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Now that's a harsh thing 
coming from the mouth of God, but that is what he said to the children of Israel in the Old Testament. And if you stop to think about it, how much sense does it make? Because if you reject God and what he's telling you to do, how can he uh, provide anything for you if you're rejecting everything that he's telling you to do? You would Because you're, reject, you're rejecting his instructions. So then you're rejecting his advice. You're rejecting his counsel. You're rejecting, that's a rejection. That's a telling God that you don't agree with what he's saying. You do not believe that his word will not return void. You don't believe anything that he's saying in his word. So therefore you, you have no reverence for him. So to the individual that does that, he also says, he'll be, he tells them, I will also reject you. Okay, and if he rejects you, that's one rejection you don't want to have to receive is the rejection from God. And then it goes on to tell us, as they were increased, so their sins increased also against me. Therefore will I change their glory into a shame. And they eat up, uh, I'm not even going to go any further from there because I think those two verses are really what is extremely important. And understanding the, uh, the, how important God's word is and what he says out of his mouth and how that is the ultimate uh, everything in the earth even today because as we look in the book of Genesis when he first created began with creation everything is established and centered in around what came out of the mouth of God okay and just as the kingdom is established through by Christ Jesus and everything that came out of the mouth of God, what he established for him to come into the earth and to be the savior for each and every individual in the kingdom. And he says that we are sanctified and we are the righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now that is the word of God. That is what God's word says regarding sanctity, being sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, coming into the kingdom, chosen by God, set apart as a priest, a holy nation in his kingdom greater is he that is in you okay that is the greatness of the holy ghost once you've been birthed into the kingdom you are filled with greatness because of that because of the holy ghost that greatness and you can do all things through christ who is your strength because you've been birthed in him hallelujah and that is another word of the lord that uh, the heavenly father gives us and these are just some affirmations, some encouragements that the Heavenly Father has stated in His Word for His saints in the earth today. Whenever they begin to feel trodden down by the enemy and whatever he may be trying to come up against us with, we have that assurance from our heavens that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are the righteousness of Christ in Christ Jesus. And though you walk through the valley of death, okay, the shadow of it thy rod and the staff of the heavenly father will comfort you and will keep you will keep you grounded will protect you in the mighty name of christ jesus now that is what the word of god decrees and declares and the lord has also decreed and declared out of his word that he will deliver us out of all all in the kingdom of god all of our troubles because he knows that the enemy tries to place troubles on the saints of God in the kingdom. But we have his assurance through by his word that he has stated it will not return void. Okay? It will not. It will accomplish that which it is set out to accomplish. We have that assurance in him, almighty heavenly father. And we thank you right now in the mighty name of Christ. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your mighty assurance that you have decreed and declared that your word will not return void. That every word that we can stand upon, every word that comes out of your mouth from the throne room of heaven. We have victory in you and through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And we praise you for it, O heaven. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. All right. God bless you. And God be with you, and I will see you as we continue to go forward on the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study Video Channel.